A couple years ago, I joined my brother and a group of friends on a camping trip to the Sequoias. Now, the Sequoias are stunning, and I love camping and hiking. This was the perfect trip. On our first day there, we planned to go on a three-mile hike, and this sounded doable since not everyone in the group was really into hiking. And it started off great. Like, we had the beautiful scenery of these massive trees and some cool rushing water following our path. But as the hike went on, we noticed that we were about to get to that three mile mark and it didn't seem like we were anywhere near the end. Then we passed it and another mile and another mile and another and another and little did we know that this three mile hike would turn into a 15 mile one. Now, as much as I love hiking, planning for a three mile hike is very different than planning for 15. My skinny PB&J sandwich and child-sized pack of chips and single bottle of water was not going to cut it for me. In the last few miles of the hike, the group began separating from one another. A few were lagging behind, and then there was just my brother and I. We were so exhausted, but out of the blue, my brother starts running. I know, it was the weirdest thing. I was like, dude, what is going on? And I think what it was is we were so tired, but a little more eager to get to the end. And he thought I, I might as well run to it. So of course me being the competitive little sister that I am, I decided to start running too. And it quickly became this competition to see who could get to the finish line first. And so I'm running, I'm running. And as I did, I become so distracted by trying to win that all of a sudden I find myself running through the middle of the sequoias alone alone in this massive forest. As I just come to this realization, in the next moment, I hear movement to the left of me, and I notice a bear. But then I see another one and another one. There was a mom and her two cubs literally 10 feet away from me, right next to the path, eating food from a tree. Now this had to be one of the most terrifying moments of my life. And I remember thinking to myself, do everything you can to not draw attention to yourself. And I'm trying to recall any lesson I've ever heard about running into bears. And so I start walking as slowly as I could backwards. I took a few steps and then a few steps more. And then I just decided to sprint out of there where I saw the road close by. Now I'm not sure if those were the right moves, but I got away and I know I wasn't eaten. I quickly realized that day that being alone in this forest was not a good idea. See, if things had gotten crazy, the bear attacked, I would have stood no chance by myself. And this made me think, in what other circumstances of life is this true? Why is being alone not good? Well, in the Bible, Luke 5 shares the story of Jesus teaching to a crowd of people in someone's home. And in verse 18, it says that just then some men come carrying on a stretcher a man who was paralyzed. They tried to bring him in and set him down before him, before Jesus, but since they could not find a way to bring him in because of the crowd. The crowd was just so overwhelming, these men look to themselves and see that there's no space in the house. So we need to come up with a plan B. And so what they do is they get up on the roof, lower him on a stretcher through the roof tiles into the middle of the crowd before Jesus. And seeing their faith, Jesus says, friend, your sins are forgiven. Now, what I love about this story is that, yes, an amazing miracle is about to take place. A man who is paralyzed gets healed. This is incredible. But if you notice in the scripture, Jesus points out the faith of his community. We see that despite the challenging circumstances of trying to fight through a crowd of people to get to Jesus, these men didn't let it stop them and push through for the sake of the one man in need of help. And it is out of their support and faith that this man is healed. We are better in community because it reminds us that we don't have to face life alone. God knows our greatest needs in life. And this was one of the first things he actually addresses in the book of Genesis, in the beginning of time, creating Eve for Adam so that mankind would never have to face life alone. And it's kind of like this. When I moved into my home, it took a lot of work. Most of the boxes I could handle carrying on my own, but then it came down to the big box that held all of my books in it. I could nudge it, I could drag it a little, 
but I couldn't carry it. And why? Why wouldn't I invite someone else in to help me carry it? It would make my life so much easier. Maybe it's because of my pride or the idea in my head that I should or have to handle it on my own. How about the fear of being an inconvenience to others? But the simple fact is, is that if I were to invite others in, I could carry this box way further than I would ever be capable of doing on my own. In life, we will struggle. We will face obstacles and challenges and a weight that is often too heavy to carry. But the good news is this, is that the moment we invite Jesus to be a part of our life, we're invited to be a part of something called God's community, where we don't have to carry those burdens alone. In 1 Corinthians 12, it says, so that there may be no division in the body, the church, but that the members may have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all members rejoice with it. What a crazy concept. And so it's saying that when you are a part of God's community and you hurt, so does your community. And when you experience a loss in your life, they are there to grieve with you. When you are sick and in need of prayer, they are there to pray with you. When you stumble into temptation, they are there to be your support. And in the same way, when great and good things are happening in your life, your community is there to rejoice with you in it. It takes grieving and rejoicing to make God's community stronger. And when it is strong, so are we. We. You don't have to carry the struggles of life alone because it is in community that we get to see that it is better to do life with others than alone. And so I encourage you, sink yourself as deep as you can into God's community.